Ah, uh, dinner time. Wait a minute. When life gives you long lemons, oh, you gotta build a place to hoard them. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to build DK's treehouse. This idea was born from a previous comment, so leave a comment about what else I should be bound by blood to build. To build this thing, you're gonna need a big branch, some more branches, coffee stirring sticks, and an old plastic lid. You'll need a few other crafting things that we'll get into later. To start, first grab your chunk of wood that would make a righteous treehouse and trim it to size. Yep, that's wood. We'll be building a log cabin, so for the scale logs, go find a stick, and then go find 50 more. If you find baby sticks like these, make sure to leave them be so they can keep growing. These twigs are still raw, so don't eat them right away. We first need to bake them for one hour at 170 degrees Fahrenheit until they're still brown and sticky. This is actually just to sterilize the stick so you don't accidentally ingest some of the tree coli bacteria. Before we start building, go grab your other log cabin and try a quick fit test for your main tree trunk. If you don't have one, that's very reasonable. Now this step is optional, but I'm going to take a coffee break to see if I can get a little crafting epiphany going. Ooh, like this! This would make great lumber for the treehouse deck. I'll leave a link in the description for the particular stirring sticks I'm using. Here's a crafting tip. Using a coffee can and a bunch of rocks, you can add years of wear and tear to things by throwing in a bunch of sticks and shaking the Funky Kong out of it. Hmm, it did nothing. We'll have to weather them a different way. These sticks are too long, so use a pair of scissors to make them one long. Then lay down a platter of masking tape with the sticky side up to hold your wood in place while you assemble it. Try to stagger and alternate your wood pattern so it's less boring while you're assembling and less boring to look at. The real magic in keeping this deck together are these supports, which I'm attaching with super glue and then weighing down with something flat and heavy. Some of the glue leaked through to my heavy flat thing, so it's just something to keep in mind. Then, just wrestle your deck from the tape and trim off the extra bits hanging off the edges. If you want a more rustic deck, just keep those bits on, I don't care. Shaking my can around earlier didn't really impress anyone, so I'm adding some weathering and battle damage using a craft blade. This next part is a whole endeavor. We get one shot to add a hole to the deck we just built, so make a hole template using paper or foam board and use it to trace out the perfect pear shape in your deck. Okay. To attach the deck to the tree, I used hot glue. Don't worry about messy globs because they'll be hidden under the treehouse. Then I used a level to make it level. Drill a hole in the bottom for attaching the base. I almost put the base on first, which would have been a mistake, like trying to put your pants on over your shoes. For the base, I'm using a plastic lid I don't need and then attaching it using a wood screw. This lid was a rare find when it comes to lids. The edges are smooth and don't have ridges like mini plastic lids. Keep on the lookout for these. I must protect this smooth edge, so I'm sealing it away with masking tape for now. The top though is going to be covered in various glues and pastes, so I'm roughing up the plastic with sandpaper. This will give your glue and paint some texture to hold onto, as well as the clay in the next step. We can't legally call this stick a tree until it has some roots, so I'm using air dry clay to rough out a few water legs for our trunk. For the tree skin, I'm using a silicone sculpting tool and a wire brush to blend it into the bark. As you can see, the clay starts to look really shaggy, but you can smooth out and blend out all these details using isopropyl alcohol. Use a paintbrush to smooth it on, but don't go too nuts with the alcohol or you'll melt away all your detail. For the base structure of the treehouse, I made four walls from foam core. If you're wondering why this last one looks like Frankenstein's monster, it's because I resurrected these pieces from my foam core scrap heap. Great job! The walls are hot glued together and then attached to the deck. For the roof base, any old cardboard will do. The jungle pattern on this tissue box felt appropriate and helped me get into the mood, even though you'll never see it ever again. Then I realized I didn't keep enough overhang on my roof pieces, so I used a redundant sheet of balsa wood, even though it'll be totally covered up later. Is that a 28mm tabletop door template? Is this going to be used in a Dungeons & Donkey Kong game? Maybe. Hey, thanks for sticking around this far. Time to cut some of these to size. But be careful though, because they really go flying. Try to catch them if you can, or just launch them into a backboard or something. But your best bet might just be to do a little ET pinch while you clip each branch. 
there's no shortcut to this step. It's just clipping and gluing and clipping and gluing and telekinesis and gluing until you've covered up the entire house. For the window trim, I'm adding deeper wood grain to this balsa wood sheet, then slicing and dicing until I have a nice set of reclaimed balsa wood beams. I love whenever the art direction of a thing I'm building is sloppy and uneven, because it makes my unsteady hand look intentional. This circular window presented a problem though. The logs are very uneven, so I'm gluing these trim pieces onto this cardboard ring. I assembled the whole thing off-site, including the tiniest of window grills, and then attached the whole thing in one piece. You know how the roof is already made of wood? Now cover it up with more wood. We're attaching coffee stirrers in alternating rows with white PVA glue. Don't forget to set your house free and admire those long wings on the side. Time for a haircut. I'm trimming the excess off with some clippers, making sure to save the excess for later, and then offering it some gel. And the final detail was the beam across the top of the roof, which I carved and textured using a craft blade. We're just about ready to paint, but first we need to add some texture to the base. I'm spreading on some modeling paste and then stippling it using a paper towel to remove the brush strokes, add some randomness, and to hide the fact that this is really just a lid. Before painting, I'm priming and sealing in one step using a mixture of matte Mod Podge and black paint. This is a recipe I learned from Black Magic Craft. After sealing, I give it a crown of brown from the top down so we don't lack black in the cracks. Now let's start painting using this exciting array of browns. Okay, so you might be asking, wasn't the wood already brown? Why are you painting a brown thing brown again? First of all, who are you to accuse me? But second, I don't want to steal Mother Nature's work, that's plagiarism. But most importantly, natural outside brown is good, it's beautiful, but we need that low poly DK64 brown. So for that, we're simplifying the color palette with these exciting browns, working our way up from darker shades in our sloppy base coats to lighter and lighter shades with dry brushing. The goal is to not cover up the earlier browns completely, so I'm dry brushing with the smallest amounts of paint on the brush and only trying to hit the edges and raised details with lighter shades. For the deck posts, I carved a couple pieces of balsa wood and painted them. If you have some disposable chopsticks lying around, those also work great for this type of thing. Then I moved on to building and painting the sign for the top of the treehouse. I was thankful that DK's penmanship isn't great, so I didn't have to work too hard for this. For the underside of the treehouse, I added a couple non-functional support beams with glue, then capped them off with tiny nails just for the aesthetic. For the base, I'm going to try gluing down some actual dirt from outside. Dirt is available pretty much anywhere, you just have to dig. Or if you have a mole problem, half the work is already done for you. Borrowing a sieve from the kitchen, I sifted dirty ground dirt through it until I had powdered dirt and whole grain dirt. Mmm, then put that powdered cinnamon all over your forbidden cinnamon roll. I'm brushing off the excess dirt that didn't stick to the watered down glue, then spraying on isopropyl alcohol and using an eyedropper with watered down glue to seal in the dirt. Shout out to Luke Toen's YouTube channel for this dirty secret. Next, let's build this DK barrel from scratch, aka Diddy Kong's prison. Next, make the worst egg you've ever seen from chunks of foam board and glue strips of balsa wood around it until it's a wood football. Clip off the overhang wood bits, cap it with a wood lid, and use strips of cardboard as the metal hoops around the barrel. I used a craft blade to make two different sized DK logos and glued them on the prettiest side of the barrel. After Mod Podge and primer, I slapped on some base coats for the main colors, including this very sloppy brown coat, and then only marginally less sloppy yellow, red, and gunmetal gray. Painting is all done, so I'm sealing it all with a matte top coat. Since acrylic is water soluble, it needs protection from the nice dirty bath it's about to get. Let this grime soak into every little crevice. It looks pretty dark now, but it'll be much more subtle after it dries. If the wash is pooling in places, you can just dab off the extra using a paper towel. For the rope around the deck, get hairless twine if you can, otherwise use a lighter to singe off the leg hairs. I finished up the top deck using super glue to secure the ropes to the posts and then capped it off with Diddy's guest house. Next, roll some jungle joints. Just kidding, that was a jungle jape. I'm using this moss I got from the craft store to glue on a few strands to resemble a few climbing vines. To fill out the vines, I'm sprinkling on some of this fine grain green turf. I'm dabbing on some glue and then sprinkling it on in places to resemble ivy or moss. Time to add some grass. 
I'm using 4mm static grass and a static grass applicator to add some green in a few select places around the base of the tree. Not every blade will stick, so make sure to knock off the extra and save the rest for later. For trees, I have a pack of these super budget palm trees, but I think I can improve on them. I'm keeping the green foliage, but I'm going to use some of my leftover sticks from earlier. Use a pin vise to drill out a hole, add some metal wire or a toothpick for mounting, then use super glue to attach the palm fronds and to add the trees to the base. There, that's looking pretty good, but this spot needs a rock. Maybe one more rock. And finally, a banana horde needs bananas, so let's sculpt some using bananas as reference. Oh, these are bad. Bread. For the bananas, start by rolling out a ball of Super Sculpey into a long snake, cutting it into little hamster poops, then gently coercing them into curved bunches. After baking them in the oven, let them cool, and then dip them directly into your pot of paint for a lazy paint job and don't drop them. You can mount the bananas directly on these toothpicks to let them dry, which will let you dab off the extra paint from that terrible paint dip you did. Shame on you. Then I dry brushed the stems green and added a brown wash for some contrast. And finally, finally, we can peel off this tape and call the build done. Let's roll the beauty shots. Thanks for watching me turn a bunch of sticks into this treehouse. Again, special thanks to Moonlight Angel and all the other people dropping ideas in the comments. DK64 was always one of my favorites growing up, but let me know what some of your favorite games are. In upcoming videos, I'll be tackling some things from Zelda and Stardew Valley, so I welcome you to subscribe if that's your thing. Until next time, my name is Studson, this is Studson Studio, and I'll see you next time. If you subscribe, you'll not choose wrong. But if not, you can lick these walnuts, peanuts, pineapples, nuts.